Okay, at this time we'll move to resolution number 21 2014. And Ms. Saxon, would you please read the title? Resolution 21 2014, a resolution of the City of Boca Raton directing the city manager to terminate that certain agreement with Southeast Florida Regional Partnership that was authorized under resolution number 65 2011. The agreement authorized participation in the Sustainable Communities Grant Consortium, providing for severability, providing for repealer, providing an effective date. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so I think this is Mr. Majors. It is, yes. I, I brought this forward unrelated to the presentations that uh, were made this evening. Uh, I've been, been in discussions with the city attorney over the last couple of meetings um, to see, and, and I brought it up here, to see what our, the city's relationship was to 750. Uh, I believe, if you recall, at first we thought we were not um, a part of 750 and then found out that we were a consortium partner. Um, a couple of items were mentioned tonight about an MOU, a memorandum, memorandum of understanding, uh, which the city staff um, contacted 750 and found that we uh, actually, I don't believe they answered, did they, Ms. Frazier? Uh, they answered verbally. They didn't answer in writing, but they have confirmed that the city never signed an MOU. We they never signed Okay, we didn't sign the agreement. We did not sign the MOU, but we did sign the uh, consortium agreement. Uh, so I'm just going to read this to you. Um, in, in my looking at the 750, it's a very, um, it says a lot and it says nothing all at the same time. So the way I see it is the city is involved in an agreement. Um, that is very vague and ambiguous, and so I brought this forward. Uh, I'll read it to you, but basically what it is is that we withdraw from the agreement, but we continue to cooperate uh, or work in a cooperative manner with 750 to see what they come up with, and then we can decide at a future date whether it's something that the city of Boca Raton wants to buy into. So I'll just read it to you. Resolution 21-2014, well, the city clerk read the title block, but it's whereas the city is very short. The city of Boca Raton adopted resolution number 65-2011 on June 28, 2011, authorizing the city to enter into an agreement with the Southeast Florida Regional Partnership, Partnership to participate in the Sustainable Communities Grant Consortium, and whereas paragraph 4 of the Southeast Florida Regional Partnership Sustainable Communities Grant Consortium Agreement. The agreement provides that any member may terminate its partnership in the partnership upon written notice to the executive director of the partnership and whereas the city's involvement with the partnership and the partnership's development of a blueprint and vision for the region has been minimal and such blueprint and vision has not been presented to the city. And whereas it appears that the report issued by the partnership available at 750 report.org is extremely abstract and in its application in the in the city and its application to the city is unclear and whereas the city can terminate the agreement and continue to cooperate with the partnership and its planning efforts and whereas in the future when the partnership's report is more fully formulated the city can re-examine the relationship with the partnership be it resolved by the city council of the Boca Raton of the city of Boca Raton Section 1, this is the action part of the resolution, due to the abstract nature of the planning report issued by the partnership, among other things, the city's membership in the partnership is hereby terminated and the city manager is directed to notify the executive director of the partnership of such termination as provided in paragraph 4 of the agreement, provided the city shall continue to cooperate with the partnership in its regional planning efforts and to analyze the impacts of any reports or planning studies developed by the partnership. Um, if any section subsequent clause or provision of this resolution is held invalid, the remainder shall not be affected by such invalidity. All resolutions or parts of the resolution in conflict herewith shall be and hereby are repealed. The resolution shall take effect immediately upon adoption. So that's it. I'll open it to discussion and let the resolution speak for itself. You know, other than that, we're involved in an agreement um, that's based on a very... Uh, abstract document and uh, until we see further you know we can always buy back in and it does commit in the agreement that we will work in a cooperative spirit so okay before we have a discussion up here I'm going to go to open up the public hearing if anyone would like to come forward and speak to uh, resolution 21 2014 
uh, Glenn Groman, 2201 Northwest Corporate Boulevard, Boca Raton, Florida. You know, after the last meeting, uh, when there was some discussion about 750, I actually sent an email to uh, Councilman Mages, and I, I, I told him, you know, I, I had some questions about this particular operation. I, I, I'm actually, when, when this 750 proposition first came up, I, I, I signed into it. I, I, I said, well, I, I want to look at it. I want to see what it's all about and whatnot. And, um, you know, my interest in the vision for, for the city of Boca Raton is this, from the city of Boca Raton, not from some sort of abstract operation. And I'll go one better than Councilman Mages on abstract ideas. There's one part of the 750 scenario, um, which is a group that is um, sort of fixated on global warming. So you have an entire sort of subsection of 750, which is telling us that, all of South Florida is going to be underwater, and then there's another group that wants us to build train stations, you know, in the area that's going to be underwater. So, you know, I don't really particularly like regional regionalism in general. I think that based on my experience in, in, in living in the Northeast, that these things tend to get away from us. And, and, and speaking as an attorney, what happens is, is that – you know, there may be some controversial or some problematical issue that comes before the city, and it, it may be completely unrelated to the actual 750 organization, but we get into these legal concepts and we have a scenario whereby somebody comes out and they say, well, wait a minute, you know, the city signed up for, for, this, for this organization and they have these tenets and principles and it says we have to do this, 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 and this, and all of a sudden you have sort of, you know, um, this, this argument that because the city has participated in this organization that somehow we're to be guided by principles which the city has not adopted, which are not statutorily adopted, and which really, you know, have no place in, in, in city government. And w when they start to interfere with planning and zoning ordinances, when they start to interfere with city ordinances, I have an issue with that. So, so the speakers earlier tonight um, do have actually a point, and I think that, uh, you know, if, if, if I were looking at this down the road, I don't know whether or not this was some scheme that was set up to get grants from HUD or, or how it was set up, but I, I just have some issues with it, and I, and I think that uh, we're probably better off not being in any kind of an agreement standpoint, especially some sort of, you know, this consortium, it's, if it's an agreement, how legally binding is it, you know, where are we going from there? So I think that if we, we opt out of it, we, don't, we have no risk as opposed to being in it. We have the potential downside risk of being called, being involved with something which we don't necessarily know what it's about. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to come forward? Um, are you going to say what you did last time? or no, no. Okay. No, I, I actually, I just I wanted, we're, we're an educational. I'm name and address. I'm so sorry. Phyllis Fry, 275 Date Palm Road in Vero Beach, Florida. Thank you for the opportunity of public comment. Um, for the past almost year and a half, our organization has attended um, all of the design charrettes that 750 has given, their summits, we've attended every joint 750 and Treasure Coast Regional Planning Council meeting, Southeast Florida Regional Planning Council meeting, and South Florida Regional Planning Council meeting, and the Metropolitan Organization. So we've also attended all their open forum meetings. We've looked at their uh, final draft scenario report covering all land use and transportation, um, comprehensive land use, the subsidiarity matrix report, sustainable communities initiative report, social equity analysis and opportunity index for seven southeast counties, and the regional blueprint vision report. We've looked at their plans and their vision blueprint overlay, which conflicts with your current land uses. Um, not many people have taken the time that we have. They don't have the time that we have. We're retirees. And... Um, to attend and to really understand what is in this plan because, as you say, the 299-page report is very vague, and that is intentional, just as was intentionally passed under consent agenda. You weren't meant to think that this is anything consequential. You trust your staff to um, look at documents and sign them, and, um, and these documents were designed that way, to look inconsequential, and I really have a problem with that. They primarily call themselves new urbanism, and um, 
The new urbanism wants compact, mixed-use development that encourages a higher density and intensity of development as the preferred form of development. Of course, we have to ask, preferred by whom? So this high-density population that they want um, around mass transit is a re-engineering of our communities. And all of the statistics that we have in community preference surveys um, showing that people do not want this, that we want the choice to, have, to develop our own communities the way we want them that suit our needs. Indian River County is different than you. Uh, St. Lucie County is different, and Martin County is different. So we would like to all have a voice in, in how they're developed. And this is a taking. This is a taking away. So I guess that's just... Um, my final comments, whether it's housing or transportation or environment that they use to justify this new kind of new urbanism, which is basically upward sprawl. I don't really see Boca Raton as, as, as that kind of place. You have a beautiful community here, and that's no accident. I mean, it's because of your careful planning, but it's your planning. So that's just my final comment. Appreciate your time. Thank, thank, you, very, <clears throat> thank you very much. Anyone else like to come forward? Seeing no one come forward, we're going to close the... Uh, yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Heidi Clear, and I live at 290 West Palmetto Park Road. Now, I'm not sure if my comments are about the new urbanism, or are they about, can I say about anything? Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, we are at the moment on okay. this Because I'll come back up later when, it's, when you have it open to everybody. Well, you, we've already had the public request portion okay. of the meeting. Okay, I'll come back at another time. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there anyone that would like to come forward and speak to this subject matter, to the resolution at hand? Seeing no one come forward, we're going to close the um, public hearing. Um, s s we need a motion. Yeah, okay. Uh, is there a motion on the floor? Hey, Madam Chair, I move adoption of Resolution 21-2014. I'll second it for discussion. Um, my question, I think I need to turn to you first, um, to the city attorney. Um, as stated on June 28, 2011, uh, we authorized the city to enter into this agreement with the Southeast Florida Regional Partnership. What... Um, why did, what was our thought process? Um, I can't really answer that question because I was not involved. Um, but mm -hmm. I, I do know that staff was going to do some limited planning as part of the regional effort. Um, if I recall, the, um, I guess somebody in South Florida, some, maybe it was the MPOs, maybe it was the counties, or some organizations, I'm not sure who, got the ability or talked about getting some federal grant dollars. Um, had to do with regionalism and they went around to all the cities and counties and said, hey, we want to talk about doing regional planning and they had some limited information available and uh, convinced, I think, all the counties and most of the cities in South Florida to join in and participate by giving them comp plan information and things like that. Um, as you know, we set the staff members to do a couple of their meetings to listen to what they had to say and certainly now, um, there's a lot more information available now than there was three years ago. Uh, and people have different opinions about what it says, but certainly um, there's a lot more available now than there was when it was originally brought up because it was really just a concept at the time. And now more details have sort of emerged re regarding this. And I've told Mr. Magis that, that we can't determine that there's any benefit for being in this, um, but I, we don't see, on the other hand, we don't have any obligations for being in it either as far as we can tell. So. Sort of like Mr. Broman said, I guess you can still participate. You don't have to be in it, and you still get the benefit from it. And if there's more to come, as I understand, they're supposed to release some drafts or something like that, um, which we don't know what they say. You know, so and that's certainly some good questions well, that they raised. You know, there's so much that cities, individual cities, do, and they're respon and the re the responsible cities. There's so much collaboration and partnerships that that are needed and necessary to accomplish um, certain goals. Um, the the uh, All Aboard Florida issue, for example, I mean, we have, to be, we have to be regional when we talk about that. We have to be cooperative and we have to work with other 
cities and, you know, know what's going on. Um, I guess in this particular case, and I appreciate your statement, Mr. Arnell, that in the beginning, you know, it's in the beginning there was X amount of information and it seemed obviously, I'm going to assume it seemed extremely harmless and, you know, hey, let's just all get together and talk about what the needs of the city are, I mean, which is a perfectly fine thing to do. Um, I don't especially see any downside uh, in opting out um, if, if what we've heard tonight is correct. If what we've heard, and that's that we can get back in uh, if there's something that is of interest to us and necessary to talk regionally and to solve a problem regionally or make something happen uh, that, that is to our benefit, then we can, you know, we can opt in. On the other hand, it doesn't seem to necessarily have any negative impact if we opt out. There's no money. There's no money in this thing, right? I mean, we're not we're not giving money. We're not. We're paying not paying any. Bills. We're not receiving we're not any from it. That's doing right. anything with that? So, um, I, I don't. I don't want anybody to go away from here tonight thinking that the mayor uh, does not think that it's important to think regionally at times. I think it's very, very important to think regionally at times. You just have to know what those times are, uh, and you have to be very clear, you know, about who's in control and, and uh, you know, how the process is going to work. But as far as just calming the waters, if you want to, if we want to look at it like that, just making a, you know, everybody goes to bed and sleeps a little better uh, because they're not worried that we've signed something or we're engaged in something that due to legal Smeagol, you know, is going to come back and get us. Um, you know, that's, that's, there's just no downside to, to up and out that I see. Madam Chair? Yes. Um, yeah, I certainly am a defender of home rule and anything that would um, take away our home rule, I certain, certainly would not support. I do have a question, though, and I don't have the agreement in front of me. Uh, the June 28, 2011 um, resolution authorized the city to enter into an agreement what did that agreement, what does that agreement say, Ms. Frazier? Um, the agreement that's being referred to is the, uh, it's called the Sustainable Communities Grant Consortium Consortium Agreement. There was also, um, was referenced and has been referenced before as a memorandum of understanding that many of the partners did sign. For whatever reason, this is the only instrument we've executed. We did confirm with the staff of um, the partnership that we did not sign an MOU. Not that I think it particularly matters uh, because the, the details are somewhat the same in the sense that it's a planning exercise. Um, but this consortium agreement, and I'm, I don't have the MOU, but I'm sure it had a provision as well, that this is all a voluntary partnership. So, of course, it provides that any partner can, um, can terminate its role. Um, the intent at the time was that some cities, like us, committed to certain resources. Our resources were that we were sending some planning staff to participate in some planning meetings. That happened. So we have no ongoing... Um, commitment. There may be other cities that still do, but I think that's unlikely. So it's fairly technical. So we, we signed this agreement to participate in this study. Right. And I understand the study's concluded, and they did the final summits. So our relationship should terminate automatically, shouldn't it, if the study's complete, is concluded? Right. I mean, the, we, we, didn't, we didn't sign an agreement to enter into planning services or any no. type of uh, zoning changes just to... Yeah, so when does the agreement just That's become... Yeah, so when does, yeah. The, when does this agreement just expire? I believe the agreement does say something about implementing the blueprint and the vision, that we're, the partnership will still uh, assist in implementing the blueprint and vision, and, and it doesn't say a lot about what that blueprint and vision is in the uh, study. I think, in answer to your question, it is my understanding as well that essentially the, a plan has been put online. They have a report. They have a website. Um, it may very well be that as a partnership and certain of the partners feel like it's productive to continue to do regional efforts, and they may have other planning concepts underway. Um, so uh, I, I don't believe that there's an outside date in the sense that um, until the partnership feels, I guess, that it has no more productive activities, it, it continues. Yeah, I, um Having read it a number of times recently now over the last couple of weeks, there, there's no expiration date in the agreement. Um, I do think, and I haven't read this, but I've heard from some parties that perhaps they might be submitting this, the organization might submit for, on, for grants and may make certain representations to the federal government based upon their study and those kinds of things is my okay. understanding. 
Well, do we even know what the study says? Uh, there is a draft Generally, out there. Well, there's, uh, a, there's a, there's a, there's a, they online. put a plan online, right? It's, it's, it, there it's, is a plan that they produce. It's online. It's, uh, I've only spent a little time looking at it. I can tell you it's very general. It's in very nature. lengthy and, for well, lack of a better term, there's a lot of gobbledygook in there <laughs> that's uh, hard not to Not a legal term. Well, she's the lawyer. Is it good gobbledygook or is it bad gobbledygook? No, it has an abstract nature. Yeah, it's so abstract, you you know, you could read it whatever you want into it, really. I mean, it's a planning document. It's not a regulatory document. Okay, I think that we should call the city of Boca Raton winners. We've got two resolutions here tonight that came along. And they both are winners. Uh, they both tell the public that we want to hear what they have to say and that we don't want to tear up roads that the public doesn't want us to tear up. Um, and we don't want to uh, be controlled by someone else when we don't even know what we're being controlled for or over. So, um, you know, let, let's, let's get it over with. Let's vote. And uh, any further questions? If not, Ms. Saxon, would you please call the roll? Scott? Yes. Welchel? Yes. Magus? Yes. Malay? Yes. Haney? Yes. Motion passes 5 to 0. Okay, and the winner is, out of these two resolutions, the winner is the City of Boca Raton. So congratulations to the City of Boca Raton.